What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about why is French spoken in Canada? This is a, a video I have been wanting to make for a decent while now. This is a question I have had over and over again. And honestly, lots of Americans are familiar with the fact that French is spoken in Canada. It's just this fun fact Americans know about. We're like, oh, that's interesting. That's different, huh? But none of us ever kind of wonder, wait, why is that? What, what's, what's the deal with that? How did that happen? How did that happen? What's going on here? So I, I found this little video about why is French spoken in Canada? And it's, I'm, I'm glad to finally have this question answered. I assume it has something to do with history, some kind of fascinating story. So I don't know, this, I feel like this is gonna be fascinating. So let's take a look. Now I'm addressing you in English, although quite a number of you aren't actually born speaking English as your first language. Mm. And this is because of a certain European nation that got involved in the early modern period. They have a red, white, and blue flag. They're mm. famous for their cheese and their incredibly romantic capital city. Oh, now, yeah. of course, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Wait, that that's wrong. It, it's, it's not the Dutch. <laughs> okay, I didn't know this was going to be a funny video as well. History with Hilbert. Histoire avec Hilbert. Ah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> anyway, the take-home message here is that it was not in fact the Dutch, but rather the French. And yes. there are actually 7.2 million people who speak French as a first language in Canada today. That's amazing. I didn't even know that. 20%? 7 million? 7.2 million Canadians. French as a first language. That's the part that kind of blows my mind. It's one thing to be bilingual or have, or have a second language, but French as a first language in Canada. A place that I think the most mind-blowing part is lots of Americans are like, oh, Canada and the United States are very similar. We even sound very similar. But then randomly 20% of the Canadian population speaks French as a first language. It's amazing. Like, okay. I, I could go on and on about this, but I want to hear the story. Which is 20.6% of the country's entire population. But how did this come about? Why yeah. are there so many first language French speakers in Canada? Yeah. Well, of course, before the French arrived, people were speaking very different languages. Right. And these languages were spoken by the First Nations people. Of course, there are very many different groupings of Native American peoples. In the south, you have, uh, and in the, the west, actually, you have the Nadene people. And very mm. interestingly, um, is that they also are related to groups in the far south of the United States today and some along the Pacific coast. Oh. In the far north, you have Inuit group, whereas uh, further to the east, you also had uh, Huron groups, the Wyandot people, Algonquin groups, um, lots of different groupings there. I like this. You know, I, I actually appreciate when when someone breaks down things to like their... The very early, like very basic. So I actually like that this narrator is going all the way back to before before when English wasn't even necessarily the major language in Canada. And actually, while I won't be talking about them very much today, I do very much plan on talking about them in the future. And I also okay. want to bring... Um, oh, these, by the way, are my little bots for um, the Inuit peoples further to the north. Okay. Um, I do actually want to bring your attention to the fact that you can learn a lot more about the native peoples in America. And this is something that I've been doing. If you are, then you should... That would be fascinating, honestly, to learn about... Uh, the native original inhabitants of North America, Canada, America, all that. But that's for another that's for another video, I'm afraid. And what is this? Some kind of ad? I'm going to skip his audible ad. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, here we go. He started his first mission into the area that's now Canada. Oh, 
Jacques Cartier. French explorer Jacques Cartier started his first mission into the area that's now Canada, heading okay. from around the area of Newfoundland and then into the um, Gulf of the Bay of Lawrence. Okay, so was this a French explorer in like the 1500s, basically? That kind of area. Now, what's interesting about Jacques Cartier is actually that he wasn't born in France because he was born in 1491 in the last year that Brittany was still an independent duchy. And now this is a really huh. weird link back to a really old video of mine from 2017, um, which was about the Breton crisis, because I covered quite a bit of Tudor history. So if you want to know about the Breton... Oh my God, we are really getting into the history here, but I like it. I have heard of an individual called Jacques Cartier. I don't think I'm saying that properly, but I know that name. I wonder, gosh, I, I just don't remember what he did, but he obviously has something to do about arriving in Canada in the 1500s by the sound of it as a Frenchman, or technically not born in France, as they're saying. In crisis, um, and the state of affairs in Brittany when he was, uh, you know, a child when he was born, then you can click on the link and you can hear sort of uh, fairly pre, kind of close to voice drop age Hilbert, which is quite interesting to hear. Huh. Um, but you can do that if, if you so choose. But anyhow, that's an important date, but more Canadians will know the date of 1608. And this is because of another French explorer, Samuel de Champlain, and this is the year in which he founded the first site on what's now Quebec. Oh, wait, wait, okay. I'm not, okay. I, I didn't totally understand what Jacques Cartier uh, did for this story, but... It sounds like Samuel de Champlain uh, actually established. What did he? What did he refer to this as? What did he create in Quebec? Th this is the year in which he founded the first site on what's now Quebec. Uh, okay, there you go. The first site in Quebec in the 1600s. So a very important date for the French there. Now he did actually already found uh, another place, Victoria, Port Victoria in 1605 but of oh. course 1608 the foundation of quebec is is seen as being more significant and important and both of these were founded along the lawrence river so that they could trade with the native tribes there wait so this individual i keep forgetting his name um samuel de champlain basically founded or created what would be quebec in six, the 1600s, am I understanding this correctly? A Frenchman uh, literally traveled from France to Canada and uh, founded Quebec in the 1600s. Is that what I'm understanding here? Were founded along the Lawrence River so that they could trade with the native tribes there because fur was in, an incredibly luxury resource that was very much sought after in Europe. And so the French were there so they could trade with the natives ah. and then bring the pelts back to Europe and hopefully make their fortune in that way. Okay. But I hear you say, if they were just traders, then how did they leave such a lasting linguistic legacy? That ah, yes, that is a good question. So a lot of people from France were coming to Canada, traveling all the way to Canada, goodness gracious, not easy in the 1600s, uh, to live in Quebec, to do all this fur trading and whatnot. But th that was all to just get all this, this trade supplies and go back to France and sell it to become rich, 1600s rich. Um, so this is a good question, if that's the case. If the, the, the people from France came to Canada, then hightailed it out of there, how did they leave such a important, lasting linguistic legacy, as they so eloquently put? You have over 20% of Canada's population speaking French. Because, yeah. of course, the Dutch did something similar in the area of New Amsterdam, which is now New York, but Dutch is no longer spoken there. Yeah. Well, unfortunately for them, the British came, and in much larger numbers than the Dutch and the French at this time. So you had Englishmen coming over, Irishmen, Welshmen, Scots, uh, and you get a really great mixture there. And they were coming over in large numbers, oh. um, and so their population greatly outnumbered that of the French. Oh. And this is why the French came up with a strategy, and they invited over um, several hundred women from France, mostly young women between 16 and 25, who were called les filles du roi. 
And this means the daughters of the king, the king's daughters. And essentially, these were young single women, lots of them from Paris uh, and other areas, as I'll talk about in just a minute, who were brought over as wives for the mostly male population of the traders in New France. Now, the reason for this was to boot... Oh, hold, hold up. Wait. Uh, so, young women from France were shipped over to Canada to become wives for the settlers there? Is that what I'm understanding? I'm, I'm having trouble understanding if this, if this was, like, because they were seeking some kind of opportunity or if this was all against their will which I'm afraid could have very well been the case, right? In, in the 1600s. ...population of the traders in New France. Now, the reason for this was to boost the numbers. And actually, they really did this very successfully because from 1663 to 1672, the population of New France doubled and then more than doubled in the years afterwards as well. New France, is that uh, what Quebec was before Quebec was Quebec? Or... What is, does Quebec mean anything? Does Quebec mean New France? Q Let me look this up. Quebec. Quebec, Quebec. Um, New France. Yeah, it does come up with something. The colony of Canada was a French colony with a, the larger territory of New France. Um, the colony remained a French territory until 1763 when it became a British colony known as Quebec. So New France was what it was before it was Quebec. And yes, they literally brought over a ton of French women to uh, populate. That was their literal purpose. So, I don't know, sounds a little sketchy to me, but I guess that's the history. The population of New France doubled and then more than doubled in the years afterwards as well. Which wow, is and it, it was successful. Like the population boomed and these were all the children of French mothers, at least. Uh, okay. Interesting. This is, I mean, this is like, uh, sounds like kind of a bad story, but I have to say this, this whole historical event, how this all went down, how the, the French culture was established in Canada, the whole story, this is like interesting history for me to learn, I have to say. Of New France doubled and then more than doubled in the years afterwards as well, which is exactly what they were hoping for. Hmm. Now, a lot of these girls actually came from the area of Normandy. And if okay. you've been watching my channel recently, you might have seen my video on the Norman French language. And actually quite a lot of Norman French influence has entered the modern language or dialect that's spoken in the area of Canada, the French language spoken there, mm. especially the dialect of Joual, which is seen as quite a, a, a working class dialect, especially in certain urban areas, has a lot of um, Normanization in it, which is very interesting. Now yeah. to return to the history, in 1685, we also get another wave of emigrants coming from France. This is because of the uh, revocation of the Edict of Nantes, which had promised uh, tolerance of Protestants in France because there's a huge, uh, huge wars that were fought in the 16th century and now okay. in the 17th century it was revoked so lots of protestants fled to south africa as well for example um, and these were called the huguenots and many of them also came to france now in 1713 uh -huh. so wow though there were s several periods where people from france women were being uh were able to go to canada to new france excuse me new france which would become quebec have lots of children, increase the French population that way, then more people from France were wanting to go to Canada as well in like the 1680s. And now we have the 1713s. Are there even more French people wanting to go to New France? The war of the Spanish succession ended. And this was a war that was fought between the Dutch and the English, the, the British against the French and the Spanish and others. And so this came to an end with the Treaty of Utrecht, Utrecht being in the Netherlands, that actually is in the Netherlands and has to do with the Dutch. But after this, the English, uh, I, I need to say the British at this point, really, because you've, you've got the, uh, the, the, the official union already going okay. on from 1707 in uh, Britain. But anyhow, the British, they, they turn their attention to the North American theater and they start to make inroads into native territory, many of the native tribes being allied to the French. Hmm. But in 1756, they actually start fighting physically with 
the French specifically in the area of New France in Canada. Ah. And this is known in Europe and, and the rest of the world as the Seven Years' War, although specifically the North American theater is known as the French and Indian War. Oh, wow. I have literally heard of all these things. The Seven Years' War, the French and Indian War. I'm just so bad at history in general, I have to admit, that I never really appreciated what it all was. I'm, I'm actually really happy that I, uh, this is, this video is not, like, it is talking about why, at the root of all this, French is spoken in Canada, but... It's giving, like, all this historical background information is, like, fascinating and probably good for me, honestly. And this essentially pit the British and their native allies, um, specifically the Iroquois Confederacy, against the French and their native allies. For example, yeah. the, the Huron or, or Wyandotte Confederacy um, and, and many other groups as well there. Now, of course, for Americans, this is important because Big G Washington was involved on the British side there. And afterwards, um, the high taxation that was imposed on the population is one of the reasons for the American Revolution occurring. Yeah. But for Canada, it's very important because in 1790, uh, 1759, the British gained the other hand. And at the Battle of the Plains of Abram, they defeated the French army and managed to capture the city of Quebec. Really? After which time Canada... I had no idea about all this. Like, I at least know my American history pretty decently, but I've, owned, I, I've always found it so fascinating that Canadian history is not taught very well or very extensively in American schools, Amer like Canadian geography and history. It's just not taught very well, which is kind of baffling to me, but I think we're correcting it here. So basically, uh, Britain uh, was waging war against New France and won. Canada became British and remained to capture the city of Quebec, after which time Canada became British and remained British. That's why Canada is technically under like the the British Empire uh, technically to this day, right? Because Britain literally waged war against the French inhabitants of Quebec in Canada, and the French were there in the first place because they had traveled to Canada and New France uh, in like the 16 and 1700s. I think I understand all this. I think I actually get it. Now, after this time, they really did try to force the population that was, of course, from France, French speaking, to start speaking English. And they changed the legal language to English uh, and tried to repress the Catholic faith, which was right. very much tied to the French as well. But this only lasted a little while. And in 1774, with the Quebec Act, they actually revoked many of these uh, intolerant measures. So they, they, they lifted the ban on, on French in courts and things like this. So the, the official language of the courts was returned to French in the area of Quebec, um, wow. as well as some of the intolerance towards Catholics. I'm shocked that it worked out so well. Like this act, the Quebec Act was in 17 like 74, I think they said. In the 1700s, they established that it was okay to speak French again even though uh the the Brits were basically trying to force the French culture out of Canada at that point and ban speaking French, but it was made legally like, legally protected in the 1700s, all the way back then. That's pretty cool. But you can clearly still see the French influence in Quebec. For example, on the yeah. flag, they clearly have the four fleur de lis. And as I explained in another video, which is about the French flag, you can also see that the base design of the flag of Quebec is actually based on the military standards that were used by French regiments in the Royal French Army. Huh. And that essentially is why Canada also has a French history. All wow. right, everyone, so I hope you found this video interesting. I just thought it was an interesting topic about why there was French being spoken in Canada. And I also felt like I really had to make a video about Canada at some point because I have so many Canadians watching me, which is really awesome. I really appreciate it. Wow. Wow. That was a fascinating story. I don't know how I expected it to go. I mean, it's just history is interesting. Who knew? History is just... <laughs> That's why there's so many people uh, l looking up and reading and learning and devoting their life to that stuff. Who knew? Who knew? No. But sarcasm aside, this was a very interesting story. I had always wondered why f French was spoken in Canada. And I guess in hindsight, it all kind of makes a lot of sense that there was a very, very deep 
very established, important French presence in Canada that established, basically established Quebec all the way back in the 16th and 17th, 1700s. Uh, fascinating. And then it was almost all taken away by Britain at one point and banned, but it wasn't. And now to this day in 2023, it's still there. That, that's kind of cool. That's like a very cool story. It's funny how history works out like that. Fascinating. I knew there had to be some kind of interesting explanation to all this French going on in Canada. I imagine Canadians are all very much brushed up on all of this history. Obviously, Canadian history. So maybe this seemed a little, I don't know, odd that I didn't know this. But I'm glad I know it now. It's fascinating stuff, really. Anyway, this video that we watched was by History with Hilbert, and I liked it. I think he did a very good job making a complicated topic uh, understandable. I'm not sure if I understood everything per perfectly. I may have gotten some things wrong. I could only really, you know, this was my first time hearing it, so I kind of just was had to go with what I think I understand, but fascinating story. Very interesting. Anyway. If you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed this reaction, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture, Canadian history, things about Canada I've never learned before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.